G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam, and for today's video I'll be taking you through how to use the server-side JavaScript rows add function, which allows you to add a row or an array of data to an existing data extension. So to start with, we can find the rows add documentation on the Marketing Cloud documentation site under server-side JavaScript and data extension functions and under the rows subset. Now, key thing to be aware of in the rows subset is that we do have to load a couple of things. First thing is for our data extensions, we do have to load in the platform core library. So we have to make sure that code's included. Secondly, because we are doing a rows function inside of our subset here are data extension functions, we're going to have to initialize a data extension using its external key. So we have to make sure that we always have an external key and not the name of the data extension as we go through and build our function for today. With that, let's jump into the rows add and see how it works. Now, beautifully simple function here with just one ordinal to use, just one object. That is, of course, the array of values to add as a new row. Now, the cool thing is, because it's an array, we can actually add multiple rows at once, as shown in our second sample code here. We're going to be adding, well, in this example, we can add two rows of data where the email is such, the first name is such, and the last name is something as well. So let's try it out for ourselves. We'll start with our basic one here to add one row. Let's copy our code and then jump into Marketing Cloud and try it out. Over in Email Studio in Marketing Cloud, I've got my setup ready to go with my run at server script tags and my platform core library loaded. Now with that, I can paste in my sample code from the documentation and see here it's our initialization function followed by our row add. Now I'm not gonna be using a birthday DE. I've got another DE to use instead. Jumping into my contact builder, I've got my add row DE. Now I don't need the name. I need the external key. So we'll copy the external key, jump back into our code and make that key there. Now for good naming conventions, I'm also going to use the name as the variable for my row or my data extension initialization. So it's my add row DE. I then use that same value down here, add row DE. Now one thing I can do is I can get how many rows were inserted by making that into a variable. So var rows is equal to this function. So the number of rows that are inserted or updated will then return as the variable here, which I can then print out to make sure that all the rows got inserted. So our function says we're going to add some rows to this data extension, which we've initialized. Great. Now the values are in this one, first name, last name, email address, age, and birthday. Well, those aren't my columns. I've only got two, one called text and one called number. Nice and simple. So if I go back into my code here, I don't need all this complexity. I can make things a lot simpler. So. Here is my two values. I'll have text and I'll also have number. Now, of course, the text has to be text and the number also has to be a number. So for the text, we can use angel. And for the number, let's just use 111 for now. I want to make sure this works to start with. So with that done, I can now also write out the result of the row insert. Because my core library is loaded, I can use the function of write. Write out just the result of rows. So there we are, on my page I should get a number of how many rows were inserted, hopefully just one, into my data extension which I can then check inside of Contact Builder. So let's save our function and make sure it works. Once saved, I'll jump in and refresh my cloud page lookup and the number one, good start. Jump back into my data extension and hopefully I see one record's been inserted. I can jump into my records and we have angel for 111, perfect. So we've now proven that we can jump in and add one row of data into our data extension. Well, what about more than one? To jump into our code, what we can see in the example is we can't just add multiple curly bracket arrays. We have to add them inside of a square bracket object to specify that this is in fact a group of rows. So to do that, we can try that for ourselves by going back into our code and we can instead put a square bracket around that one to start with, just like that. We can then copy this row put a comma between to show a second row coming through. Now call this text BBB and text CCC, and I'll leave those numbers as it is there as well. With that done, I'll go save, and let's try and rerun it. Hopefully we now get two rows inserted. Let's have a look when I go refresh, number two, let's start. Back into my data extension, I can refresh this page, and there we have it, two new rows. Okay, so you might be thinking, how is this useful? Why would I want to add static rows into a data extension? They probably don't. 
you might instead want to be adding some values that you might capture from a cloud page or from an email response or a journey or something else. You may want to insert those rows into a data extension to log the effects of some activity that's occurred. Now, for example, I don't have any activities built, but I can make an activity that might capture a random number. So what I can do is I can instead use some JavaScript functions to build out a row set and do it inside of a for loop to generate, say, 10 random numbers and insert them into a data extension. So let's try that out. Got my data extension initialized, which is great, but I now need to build up two things, the rows to insert and a loop to build them in. So let's now jump into our for loop documentation for JavaScript. You can pick up from W3Schools, our for loop documentation, and let's use this for loop. So we'll drag and drop that into our code, making a really nice for loop where we're gonna cycle through, let's say 10 times. Now inside this loop, we're of course gonna use a var, not a let, and we'll cycle through 10 times just like that. Now, what are we cycling through? Well, we have to generate a random number. Now I'm a bit lazy, and I'd rather not go and find some code for a random number, so I'm just gonna get ChatGPT to give me what I need. And that is a really complex way of doing it, but you know what, that is close enough, good enough. So the math for function, get a random number. So let's do var rand is equal to that. So the random number generated, we now need to put it into a array to then store into our data extension. Now we could of course call this row add function every time our for loop triggers, but that's a waste of processing power. After all, we do know that we can actually group our rows together and do it all in one add function that's much more efficient, especially with large data sets. So we have one more trick up our sleeve, and we can use the array push function in JavaScript. So jumping into our W3Skills documentation, we can use our array push function. We can specify an array, then use the array push to add additional items to it. So, I'm going to pick up some example code here, once again, go into my JavaScript inside of my SSJS code block here, and I can declare a variable. This variable is going to be an object. It's not going to be called fruits though, it's going to be called my row to insert. Rows to insert. There we are. Now for our rows to insert, we're going to be building up this row. You can see this push function here allows us to take that uh, object and push some rows into it. So what are we going to push in? Well, not Kiwi, that comes later on. Instead, what we can do is build up an object to send in. Now as we know, this is our structure we want to insert into our data extension for the add row DE. So that's our JSON structure we have to conform to. So if we pick up that structure, and put it here inside of our push function, it would push this in 10 times currently. That's not much good. So the text, I'm gonna call this as rand num, but the number to put in, I'll make the random number. Now this way, what we'll instead do is every time this for loop initiates and triggers through 10 times, it's going to generate a random number and then make a array uh, or a JSON object here, which is the random number and the random number that we just generated store it as a object and then push that object into the array that we just declared. So once we have that declared array of all these objects, these 10 rows put in, we can then add it directly to our data extension by pasting the rows insert array object that we declared and then push filled and now we can insert it into our data extension. With that all done, of course, the output here of rows tells us how many rows have been inserted and we're hoping to see 10. So let's see if that works. We'll go save, and then refresh our page. 10, all right, good start. Over into our contact builder, and if we refresh this screen, we hopefully find item number, 7, 28, 91. Very cool, there we go. Now my example today was a bit bland. I was using some static content which I generated on the page. In the real world, you're more likely to return a JSON payload from a REST API of some sort. And once you have that, you may have to iterate through that returned payload using a for loop, building up the rows to insert, and then insert them into a data extension. A common example for this could be something like scraping your internal product catalog, or scraping your warehouse for stock in various store locations, or even scraping the weather API. But as you can see, the data extension initialization, followed by the rows and row add function, is a very versatile way taking the data from various starting points and inserting it into your data extensions. 
And if you enjoyed today's walkthrough of the SSJS rows add function, then please let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to also subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.